Hi, this is Congressman Frank Pallone, and I want to thank the National Utility Contractors Association of New Jersey for inviting me to your Washington summit to talk about uh, major infrastructure initiatives that we're trying to pass in Congress. Now, of course, you've heard about the, uh, the American Rescue Plan, which uh, the president signed in March. That was a $1.9 uh, uh, trillion dollar plan, which was probably one of the most ambitious legislative packages ever signed into law. And that has uh, a major impact on our road to recovery, but primarily focused on uh, crushing the virus. I, some of you know that I chair the Energy and Commerce Committee, and we have jurisdiction over healthcare, um, the internet, uh, broadband, uh, environment, energy, consumer issues, a bunch of things. Uh, but um, so we were very much involved in putting the American Rescue Plan together because we wanted to get out the vaccinations and have a coordinated effort to crush the virus, have a good supply chain, make sure all the hospitals had all the protective equipment, uh, but mainly um, that vaccinations got out to the country. And that's been pretty successful now and that so many people have been vaccinated uh, and certainly look forward uh, every day to more things opening and letting people go back to normal. They can't yet, but at least uh, we're certainly on the road. But now uh, President Biden uh, in the last month or so has talked about the next phase, another legislative package that's primarily focused on uh, growing the economy and creating jobs. And a big part of that will be traditional, what I call bricks and mortar infrastructure. There are a lot of other things involved with it as well uh, that maybe the building contractors are not as concerned about, uh, but, or I should say that the uh, utility contractors might not be as much concerned about. But the bricks and mortar part is very important, and a lot of it comes under our committee. So this American Jobs Plan, which we expect to be part of the package, uh, includes uh, a reauthorization of the Surface Transportation Act for highways and mass transit. Uh, hopefully, it'll provide a lot of money for the gateway um, uh, tunnel uh, between New York and New Jersey. Uh, but it also has infrastructure components that come under the Energy and Commerce Committee. So for example, it has a major component for clean water uh, to upgrade our sewage treatment plants, to um, uh, improve our electricity grid uh, so that it accommodates um, uh, more renewable resources like wind and solar, but also is more resilient because of major storms like Sandy that we face. It also has a, uh, uh, a toxic cleanup component so that it would bring back the Superfund tax uh, and to fund Superfund cleanups. And it has a major broad, a major um, brownfields component. Uh, it has a hospital construction, uh, again, to try to address our health infrastructure. So state labs, community health centers, hospitals uh, that need to be modernized or expanded. Um, and um, also has a major broadband component because there's many parts of the country that uh, do not have internet service uh, and don't have build out for, uh, uh, for internet. So that is what we're working on now. Um, and if you wanna get an idea of what uh, is likely to be in it from a bricks and mortar standpoint, you can look at uh, the Lift America Act, which is the bill that's in our committee that includes the non-transportation uh, functions that I mentioned. Or you can look at the Moving Forward Act, which was passed last year in the House, uh, that again has the transportation component, but also has these other components of course within the Energy and Commerce Committee. Um, but I also wanted to mention before I conclude, because I don't want to, I don't want to bore you with too much here, uh, that one that we're hoping is that this jobs bill that includes the bricks and mortar infrastructure that I mentioned also addresses climate change and, and uh, tries to get us on the road uh, to eliminating or significantly decreasing, I should say, the number of uh, the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that are causing uh, the, the, the earth to warm and all these um, climate uh, potentially catastrophic incidents with major storms like uh, Superstorm Sandy or droughts or, or uh, uh, you know, tornadoes in the, in the in the Great Plains area, uh, that the you know, climate crisis is really one of the things that uh, 
is really the biggest challenge of our lifetime, but it can be addressed. And so the Clean Future Act, which is initiative for those climate issues that come under my committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee that I chair, um, we're trying to get some of those components of the Clean Future Act incorporated in this jobs bill as well. So the Clean Future Act basically looks at all sectors, transportation, and trying to get more electric vehicles and charging stations, manufacturing to have manufacturers use uh, materials that don't generate greenhouse gases, uh, better fuel efficiency standards. Most important with the electricity sector is to try to uh, have a clean electricity standard so that, so that um, um, power plants um, uh, don't, you know, by uh, 2035 uh, uh, have net zero emissions. In other words, don't emit more greenhouse gases um, than they, uh, than they uh, you know, than they did before. And the overall goal is to have net zero emissions in the entire economy by, by 2050. So, I mean, I could talk forever about this and I won't, but I did want to say that there's a lot going on down here and we do expect this major um, jobs infrastructure bill uh, that I think the National Utility Contractors Association would be very supportive of because it deals with a lot of the things that, uh, you know, that you're involved with in terms of uh, things like sewage plants and uh, safe drinking water and so many of the other things that I mentioned. So, uh, again, thank you for um, inviting me. I hope that you have a, a, a great Washington summit, but of course I do hope that next year we can do this in person rather than virtually. Uh, the virtual is okay as a means of communicating, but seeing you in person is much better. So thanks again, this is Congressman Frank.